Um, as you have seen um, in the agenda, we have uh, two interventions um, in this um, session. The first uh, one is focusing on a study um, on behalf of the European Commission on information flows on substances of concern in products from supply chain to waste operator. Um, and um, this study is um, available um, under these um, uh, very easy to learn by heart um, uh, following of uh, numbers. And um, with the presentation, you might not need to read the I think 600 pages or something like that, uh, what the entire study uh, includes. Um, so this, um, I, um, as you have seen, uh, I will use a presentation that um, has been um, um, also subject to a Caragal and Waste Expert Group meeting. So the European uh, competent authorities for chemicals and waste um, um, gathered uh, electronically in July 2020 and Antonia Weilen from Ökopol presented the outcome of this study. I will use those uh, slides more or less um, unaltered. Um, only a few uh, additional graphical elements you will spot um, and um, those um, words and sentences that are in italics are from me, but those um, are more or less uh, clarifications um, or highlighting. So um, it's more or less um, the presentation that also the European, uh, the, the representatives of the member states and the commission services have seen in July. But um, since we are an ELNI forum, I, I would um, first of all um, look back uh, at our Utrecht ELNI forum, um, then present the outcome of the feasibility study. And finally, um, I would uh, try to put this uh, into a, a bigger picture, the policy framework, Green Deal and New Circular Economy Action Plan, and what are the implications um, of the outcomes of the feasibility studies and what are the perspectives um, um, in those um, implementation efforts that the Commission now um, has to put um, on their agenda. So that is what you um, will hear in the next uh, minutes. Um, the, um, I remember uh, quite well, and I think there's also a recording from the event in um, um, two and a half years ago um, in April in Utrecht. We had a very interesting um, intervention and, and the lively uh, debate, um, starting with Alice Berner uh, from Client Earth. Um, uh, you, EU law and the tracking of chemicals in materials. This is more or less also what the feasibility study was about. We have um, um, the, uh, the question raised, um, do we need new legal approaches by Chris Buckers, who also uh, signed up for this um, meeting today, but is not with us at the moment, I think. Uh, probably he might join later as well. And also very uh, practical and hands-on um, results of uh, studies um, in the Netherlands from the National Institute for Public Health and the Environment, uh, where um, we had uh, the presentation um, on the building sector. And this is at least to some extent also a bridge to um, the intervention of uh, Edmund van Kahn later um, this afternoon. Um, so um, this is not the first time that Elni thought about a circular eco economy. Obviously, uh, the idea in itself is not really new or revolutionary, but um, um, there is still room for improvement, to put it very, uh, very cautious. Um, so, um, coming back to the study, 
um, this was commissioned by DG Grow uh, in um, 2018, so long before the new commission um, was established and ended um, after uh, the Circular Economy Action Plan was published in May this year. Uh, and the aim was to um, uh, um, assess the feasibility of options to support information flows on substance on concern in products to the end of life stage and in particular uh, to the waste operators um, uh, in order to generate benefits um, at the end of life stage um, and uh, what was not part um, of the study was um, um, environmental impact questions such as um, life cycle analysis um, and also the comparison of different options, uh, virgin material versus recycled materials and so on. Um, it focused on the information flow and we had also two um, workshops in Brussels and uh, Edmund van Kahn um, attended at least one uh, of them uh, that I can recall and gave a, a very interesting uh, presentation there. So the focus was on the waste stage, um, not on product development, um, um, eco design or design for um, a circular economy, not on substitution. It, um, the main focus was uh, to highlight the information needs of the waste sector and how to transfer uh, information on substances on concern uh, that is helpful for uh, the waste sector. And um, as we discussed in one of the workshop, uh, it is not a state of the art study. Uh, it's a feasibility study, so it takes into account future development, uh, technology-wise, uh, information flow-wise, um, IT-wise. So um, um, the argument, this, this is not um, uh, to be um, handled, to be managed right now. Um, this was not uh, valid in our feasibility study. We tried to um, look um, as far um, as possible uh, and as valid as possible into future uh, options that can support circular economy. Um, the project team was led by uh, Ökopol from Hamburg. We had also uh, risk and policy um, analysis, uh, both from UK and in the Europe branch. Um, and obviously uh, we in Darmstadt with our uh, small research group, um, Sophia, were also part of the team. Um, and um, this slide shows that um, there are a lot of um, information um, that is relevant uh, and um, in order to make this available for the waste phase, uh, all the other actors uh, in the supply uh, chain um, has to uh, have to contribute uh, to share their knowledge, uh, their uh, added value in economic terms, but also in material terms to the final product. Um, and uh, without these contributions, um, it is difficult to um, have a full picture uh, for the waste phase because it's impossible to, uh, let's say, test uh, each and every product and all the components at the end of life. So uh, this knowledge is available or should be available uh, upstream and uh, this should be col collected um, during the supply phase. Um, in the project, um, we um, performed 12 uh, um, case studies. Um, as you uh, can see in this slide, um, and um, this um, um, uh, sectors um, cover um, quite a lot uh, of the industrial society, but obviously not uh, the entire material flow, uh, but they served um, as um, 
um, uh, exemplification, what are the uh, impediments um, for those information flow, what uh, um, is available at the moment uh, and what is in the pipeline that might be available in the near or far future. Um, based on this case studies, we um, assessed implementation options. Um, uh, the colleagues from uh, RPI also made um, uh, a limited cost um, assessment, um, um, looking at the main cost drivers for the different options and finally some um, conclusions have been drawn. Um, and what um, did we come up with? We um, identified uh, four intervention mechanisms, looked at information carriers and systems to handle the information and also transfer uh, information transfer approach. I will briefly um, touch upon these uh, options in the next slides and the extended version you can uh, access under the uh, link um, at the beginning of the presentation um, and it's also on the LNU website. So uh, what is um, uh, what are the main interventions? Um, first of all um, where to dispose uh, a product um, is the first question uh, or the first uh, intervention mode. Um, the second would be an informed preparation for reuse um, or um, um, also reuse without preparation because you can say this product is still okay and it is uh, not problematic in terms of substance of concern. So it's the collecting phase um, and then the pretreatment phase. Uh, you can enhance dismantling and separ uh, separation of specific items um, by excluding those um, that contain substance of concern. And of course, the final treatment um, and um, uh, the material sorting um, in, in this context might also be supported uh, in order that you can um, on the one hand um, target substance of concern that are part of a product on and part of a product and in the other end you can uh, separate high quality um, 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 secondary raw material and thus have a better market access because you can um, um, make an informed statement that you are quite sure that there is no substance of concern in your uh, secondary raw material. So you have a high-end uh, option, you have a, a way out uh, option and you have the Norman normal um, recycle qualities um, that are already uh, available but that they have difficulties to be accepted by the market. Um, then how can we uh, make those four interventions uh, happen? Um, there are um, certain information uh, carriers available. Um, this slide so shows some examples. You can differentiate uh, in principle tracers that are embedded directly into the material. This has the advantage um, that uh, more or less the entire material is detectable um, and um, you don't rely on the fact that the tech um, might be um, not on the product when it's handed over to uh, the end of life stage, um, but there are also some interesting new developments in this um, um, uh, respect, um, which are uh, mentioned here. Uh, for example, in, in textiles, you can include RFID chips, which are um, not larger than a rice corn, so very tiny ones, passive RFID, they don't need a battery, but probably they are still an electronic equipment and um, then have to uh, reach some compliance um, uh, requirements in this respect. Um, so you can, um, with this um, 
information carriers, you uh, can transport the information on SOC along the supply chain. Um, uh, and then the question is how you can detect the SOCs. There are in principle two mechanisms. You can flag there is one um, or not. Um, and uh, you can add unique identifiers um, and both um, parts could be linked to documentation systems. Um, um, it is mentioned here. Um, and of course, this is the most important part. Um, when we try to link both parts, uh, we can say those tracers allow to flag the content and this um, in the end uh, leads to a yes or no decision. Um, yes, there is an SOC or, or no, there isn't. Um, at least at the point of time where the tracer was added to the material, there we have the time lag problem because um, quite a number of products um, are longer in use in the use phase um, uh, for example building materials and uh, at the point of time that was um, produced um, um, the um, information um, was not available um, in the same extent uh, as later on. So we have this um, so-called toxic ignorance problem. So um, uh, 10, 15, 20 years later, some of the uh, compo uh, uh, components uh, might um, contain substances of concern, uh, restricted substances or um, declarable substances. And this is, let's say, uh, limits uh, the benefits of um, this tracer uh, technology as long as it is not, um, in fact, a tag. Um, probably a uh, future development might allow that you um, have some sort of DNA imprint uh, on the material basis uh, that can be linked uh, to a documentation uh, system. Um, but that is uh, open to future development. Um, the other option are unique identifiers. Um, so, uh, like the ECASKIP database, uh, where um, um, this system already um, is introduced, you can, uh, with uh, 128 digits, um, uh, create a large number of different identifiers. Uh, these identifiers um, can uh, be um, uh, embedded in the text and with that you can uh, create an automated link to a central database and of course um, also a yes or no decision is possible but even more you can include um, um, information you gain uh, at a later stage because um, um, given that uh, the information system is based on a full material declaration approach you also know at a later stage that probably a, a problematic substance of concern uh, is embedded in the product and you can um, um, uh, update um, the database accordingly so you have a larger scope of um, um, declarable substances and those information can be used automatically during the sorting um, or um, preparing for reuse or dismantling uh, by the end of life um, actors. Um, that might be feasible um, in the future. Um, parts of that, what I described, um, is feasible at the moment um, technically, but the economic incentives are not strong enough to make full use of those options. Um, at least we um, identified the options in different stages in the different case studies um, and this led uh, to the findings um, that um, improved SOC information could generate benefits. Um, so increased volumes of less contaminated materials enter the recycling and reuse um, 
phase. Um, um, of course, there are some exam uh, exemptions. Uh, for example, um, for aircraft, uh, there are specific uh, safety um, um, uh, provisions that you always have to use virgin material um, for uh, risk management or safety reasons and others as well. But in principle, um, you uh, can um, judge better um, the quality um, of um, a secondary raw material based on a better information. Obviously, for the time being, there is no one-fits-all system um, available, um, but that uh, might, uh, might also change. Uh, we can discuss this later. Uh, and of course, you can um, combine for the different product groups, um, the, the four intervention mechanisms uh, to some extent. And uh, in all of them, information transfer and um, smart information carriers are very helpful. Um, thus, consideration of the specific conditions in the different sectors are helpful. Um, and of course, uh, the different uh, way of handling the waste streams also uh, has to be considered. But this is only the state of the art at the moment uh, in 10 or 15 years, we might see quite different technical options. Um, and for some uh, product types like construction products, um, simple approaches are already available. And of course, those low hanging fruits should be used. Um, uh, continuing with the findings, um, of course, um, the type of um, substance of concern information that is helpful depends on the needs, but the needs themselves depends on the market of secondary raw material, depends uh, on the technology of sorting and um, treating. Um, all this might be enhanced or I would uh, be uh, confident enough that will be enhanced. Um, I'm quite sure the only question is to uh, which extent and in, in what time frame. but the things are developing quite uh, dynamically in this respect. Um, so the current information needs um, does not give an um, adequate picture of the future information needs. And um, um, under the current conditions, at least for some waste streams, simple yes, no um, decisions are sufficient. Um, exception um, is the uh, informed preparation for re reuse and the case studies covered by Sophia where um, by chance um, uh, laying, um, or, uh, focusing or offering options for uh, high quality reuse. So uh, we emphasize more um, this um, more advanced uh, information transfer system. Um, and of course, in the future, um, um, as I mentioned uh, several times, more detailed material composition uh, information will be more important and will offer new economic chances, um, new business models might apply in the different fields uh, from textile to furniture, uh, to building materials, um, electronics uh, and whatever. Um, we have so many um, really precious material um, um, at our hand um, and in our uses that this should be um, supported um, uh, in line with the circular economy approach. At present, um, waste operators do not see opp opportunities um, that justify investment in sophisticated sorting. As I mentioned, the market demand is not there, but that's also a hand and egg problem um, uh, since uh, the um, end of life actors cannot really guarantee um, that their material is free of problematic substances, um, uh, the demand is quite low. Um, the, the more safety, the more uh, quality management measures are applied, um, um, the more this 
uh, my daughter. Uh, and finally, uh, finally um, um, limited results for the costs. Um, and uh, of course, um, carriers um, which are uh, more sophisticated um, have the highest implementation and operating cost at the moment, yeah, but we have, a, I would say, a large economy of scale here. Uh, once um, these unique identifiers are obligatory due to other reasons, um, example, the skip database, the additional costs um, to link other data to this identifier and to link um, and, uh, tags that allow handling in the supply chain in um, the distribution phases, um, in uh, the retailer shops uh, and for repairing. So there are a lot of benefits um, that might be gained and that will um, um, bring different um, um, a bit different uh, view um, on the costs related because uh, you have also uh, consider all these other benefits, not only the end of life benefits, but the others I mentioned right now. Um, and of course, um, not everything is needed for the waste chain, at least for the moment, um, but a more sophisticated um, circular economy would need a better information system. Um, uh, based on that, a number of recommendations uh, were made um, in um, the project. Um, most of them um, I've mentioned already. Um, and um, the, um, the benefits um, that can be gained um, are on different layers. They can be material specific, they can be products specific. Uh, specific and um, I would add that because it's beyond the scope of the study uh, it's also outside the waste chain um, this benefits uh, can be gained and more and more actors um, um, are um, willing to uh, invest uh, to gain those benefits um, as uh, we learn more or less um, every day. Um, and of course, standards are um, important uh, for all those uh, efforts for waste actors. Um, and um, if this is going to happen, uh, we need um, additional support from authorities and I would say legislative. I will come to that point in a minute. Um, and information flow elements may facilitate discussions on solutions within, which are not used today, but um, um, the, the um, development uh, both IT-wide and um, sorting and uh, treatment for, um, technology wise um, is quite dynamic um, to my impression. Of course, the SCIP database uh, will contribute um, uh, by the mere fact that you have to report to the database. This will uh, lead to less uh, SVHC in the products and this will allow reuse and recycling. And of course, um, uh, the low hanging food, the simple solutions should be um, uh, addressed first, but um, for more complex products and complex supply chain, uh, uh, also adequate uh, information flow system have to be envisaged. And the, um, uh, there are no limitations from the IT technology side, um, the amount of data, even if you consider um, an approach that um, for uh, that is product specific, uh, so for each serial number um, of an, a product uh, uh, and full material declaration is 
IT-wise, um, uh, the IT systems are capable of handling them. Uh, it's uh, uh, um, the need to, um, to standardize this um, um, information flow processes. Um, with that, I leave um, the joint meeting of Caracal and Waste Expert Groups in July. And uh, now I'm not longer Antonia Weilen. Um, I'm back to uh, Martin Führer. Um, and uh, uh, um, to to finalize, oh, just a moment. There's a chat question. Is there? Do, 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 do. Probably. Um, there's a question here from Anne van Bruggen. Uh, what is your response to the criticism the SCIP database is getting from the industry, particularly concerning the administrative burden it creates? Um, yes, um, my uh, response is that um, for reasons of uh, quality management uh, uh, and um, many other reasons, um, the future and in some um, case studies also the presence um, um, shows that a um, supply chain information system on the material content of products um, is the way forward. It reduces testing costs, it reduces um, uh, handling costs and um, it allows manageability uh, of future demands. So, um, of course, um, it creates um, for those who are um, not prepared, um, uh, you who not have prepared themselves in the last two and a half years, uh, create at the first sight an additional uh, burden, but in, in, at the second side, um, and that's why uh, the Commission um, rejected these uh, efforts uh, quite bluntly um, a few days ago. Um, the benefits um, uh, will be visible more and more. Um, and um, if we are really convinced that uh, a circular economy is um, uh, relevant for our future, then we have to make sure that we avoid a recycling of risks, a so-called risk cycle. Um, and um, the only way uh, to do that um, is um, that you have the information collected at the very beginning. It makes no sense at all to test all products um, at the end of life stage um, that uh, would, um, uh, from the testing capacity and from the costs, um, unfeasible um, under every condition. So um, um, to reach this goal, um, to exclude problematic substances from um, the uh, product stream, um, the, um, this information system is effective um, and efficient. Um, uh, um, also for those uh, who might not see this at the moment. Um, and for my view, um, uh, in a few years, uh, everybody uh, will be happy um, that they have invested in such a system, but that's future. Yeah. So uh, thank you, um, uh, Anna, very much for this question. Um, and this uh, is also in line with uh, the uh, strategies uh, formulated by the Commission. Um, and because um, these complaints, um, they are looking only um, at the burdens um, and they don't see the business options that are offered by a different uh, framework. Uh, of course, um, you have um, costs um, linked to the transformation, but those who are proactive in that way, they have, um, uh, they can gain benefits. Um, so um, uh, the feasibility study also informed um, the, um, uh, not uh, the Green Deal 
only to some extent because we had interim results. The deal promises that there will be a sustainable products policy, um, um, sustainable products um, in, in that sense that uh, we will never have a product in itself that is sustainable. We can only have more sustainable products. So it's quite right um, the, uh, that they um, 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 adjusted this here um, to support the circular design of all products on a common methodology and principles. This will foster new business uh, models and this will be linked to extended producer responsibility, meaning um, inter alia end of life. And uh, to achieve this, reliable, comparable and verifiable information is crucial. Um, the uh, Commission will step up uh, regulatory efforts in this respect and um, explicitly mentioned is an electronic product passport, which is nothing else um, as a digital twin um, of each and every product uh, linked by a tag or uh, a tracer or um, other means. Um, so um, uh, my conclusion would be that the Green Deal is looking forward into those um, paths described in the feasibility study. And when you look at the new circular economy action plan, um, there is this um, uh, sustainable products um, policy um, outlined as a leg legislative initiative, uh, which will consider establishing sustainability principles um, as the classical um, ones, durability, usability, upgradability and repairability, addressing the presence of hazardous chemicals in products, um, which is um, more or less exactly um, what the feasibility study was about and increasing recycled content in, in product uh, while ensuring the performance and safety and they are once again reliable, comparable and verifiable information is crucial and I uh, skip some of the uh, aspects. Also mobilizing the potential of digitalization of product information including solutions as digital passports, tagging and watermarks. Um, so um, this is also only a plan, but a little bit more detailed than the Green Deal. Uh, but when one can assume that the Commission is making use of the um, results of the study and will bring this into a, um, a legislative framework. Um, and on page 18, um, and they emphasize that um, as part of the European data space for smart circular applications, typical EU wording, uh, product passports, um, resource mapping and consumer information are part of the circular economy action plan. So um, obviously um, this um, feasibility study was not only for the drawer um, of the desk officer, but um, has been included into these papers. And this leads me to my final slide. Um, when we um, uh, combine those two perspectives and try to look into the future, um, my conclusion is that we need additional incentives to stimulate this yeah, design for durability, reusability and so on and to make best use of those four intervention options. I left um, the bullet points for the discussion to add but that's not enough. Uh, I think even more important is that we have to address the impediments uh, the actors in the supply chain and the end-of-life actors face and uh, obviously standardization of data structure um, and um, uh, is, is key um, and other um, elements of data exchange uh, and also in this respect uh, it can be um, seen that the skip database stimulates um, efforts um, in the standardization bodies. Um, there are efforts 
on the way and already implemented that reduce uh, the administrative burden um, substantially. Um, so if you have a good um, picture of your products, um, you can um, with one click more or less send all those data um, to skip in Helsinki. Um, uh, so if you did your homework in terms of product quality uh, management, uh, you are um, um, well advanced uh, and the others uh, have to do um, their homework in, in this respect. And also this is a maybe final answer um, or final point to Anne. Um, uh, since 2015, in the ISO 9000, uh, 9000 uh, family, where quality management um, is uh, uh, laid down, traceability has been introduced. Um, so um, it is already part of um, uh, an, a state-of-the-art um, quality management to assure traceability and uh, one essential part, at least from a circular economy uh, perspective, but also from a consumer safety perspective and occupational health uh, um, perspective is um, uh, the fact whether or not and to which extent and in which part there is a substance of concern in a product because without this knowledge you can't apply appropriate risk management measures and appropriate recycling and circular economy measures. That would be my conclusion. And um, um, as usual, I'm quite optimistic um, that uh, at least looking at those two papers and also the upcoming um, sustain, uh, sustainable uh, chemistry strategy, they're all going in that direction. Um, and this makes sense uh, because they are all uh, building pieces of an entire uh, or a broader regulatory framework supporting change processes uh, in the direction of a circular economy, which uh, avoids all the implications of uh, resource um, resources are digged out um, of uh, the soil um, in other parts of the world, uh, transported, handled, and so on. Um, we should make better use of those, uh, in many ways, precious materials that we already have extracted from the planet. That would be my final words.